welcome to this tutorial in which we are going to discuss a very famous problem called max sum contiguous sub array so as we always do we'll first start by explaining the problem statement so the problem statement is we are given an integer array a and we need to find the contiguous sub array that is containing at least one number which has the largest sum and return this sum okay so as the name suggests maximum sub contiguous sub array so we need to return a sub array which is contiguous in manner that is no element should be left in between and we need to return the maximum sum possible of this contiguous sub array so as you can see this question has been asked in various good companies facebook paypal yahoo microsoft linkedin amazon and goldman so as you can see it's a very important concept to learn and it's a very frequently asked as well so let's understand the problem statement with the help of an example suppose you are given an integer array this as input okay so minus 2 1 minus 3 4 and so on these are the elements and the output is 6 so let's first understand why 6 so as you can see there are various possible sub arrays possible minus 2 1 is a sub array even a single number is a sub array okay so as you can see various sub arrays are, are possible minus 2 1 so this sums to minus 1 this particular two elements sum to minus 2 these two elements sum to 1 4 and minus 1 sum to 3 and so on so why 6 is the answer so let's have a look if we take this sub array minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1 minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4 minus 4 plus 4 is 0 so as you can see till here we have got 0 as the sum of the sub array okay but if we take this sub array 1 minus 3 4 so what's answer is 2 okay so the uh, uh, sum of this sub array is 2 and so on we need to find all the sub arrays and we need to return the maximum sum sub array from this so as you can see the basic or the brute force approach could be find all the possible sub arrays and then return the sub array which is having the largest sum that is just doing what the question asks us to do okay so this way we will be able to find the maximum sum which is 6 in this case let's have a look at which sub array has the sum as 6 so if we take 4 minus 1 2 1 so here the sum is 6 4 minus 1 is 3 3 plus 3 is 6 if we take this element as well so it will become 6 minus 5 1 and if we add 4 it will become 5 so as you can see 5 is less than 6 that's why we return this sub array okay so the brute force approach is just find all the sub arrays find the sum and return the sub array which is return the sum which is maximum among them but as you can see and you can read about it as well that finding all the sub arrays of a given array is an exponential problem okay so it uh, so the complexity is very high and it is not an efficient prop, uh, solution so let's discuss the efficient solution which is very simple to understand but uh, not easily understood by many okay so what do we do we take two variables uh, sum to store the max sub array sum and s to store their intermediate max sum both initialized to zero so all this we will explain in detail when we are writing the code so let's understand what is the underlying logic behind this so as you can see any negative number should be taken only when adding it adding the previous number to it or the next number to it is giving us a higher sum so as you can see here the answer is 4 minus 1 2 1 so you would say why to take minus 1 because it will definitely be decrementing the possible sum but as you can see because we are taking this we are able to take these two along with four because we need to take in contiguous manner we cannot skip any number if the question was just skip any element so the answer would be the sum of all the positive number it would have been very simple but the question is you need to take contiguous manner okay so that's why four minus one two one so as you can see even though there is a negative number present the overall contiguous sub array is giving the maximum sum and that's what the problem problem asks us to perform so we are taking two variables first is sum to store the maximum sub array sum which is to be returned and another variable s to store the intermediate maximum sum and both should be initialized to zero because they are storing the sum now we loop from i equals to zero to n that is we traverse the entire array and we add the current element to s so s is the s is storing the intermediate maximum sum so what we do we traverse the entire array and we store the current element into s okay so we add the current element to s so if s becomes negative set s to zero okay so let's understand why are we doing this if s is storing the maximum 
maximum intermediate sum okay so adding a negative when it becomes negative there's no point taking that value because it will definitely be decrementing the overall value uh, suppose if we see here if s is minus 2 initially okay because uh, we will uh, iterate from i equals to 0 to n so first number would be minus 2 so s would become s plus equals to minus 2 which is 0 minus 2 which is minus 2 okay so if s becomes negative set s to 0 why to 0 because there is no point taking this element because it will definitely be decrementing the possible sum so if we, then we take the next value 1 uh, so it is uh, positive so this statement will be ignored and the up the sum would be updated with the maximum value of s comma sum so s as you know is the maximum intermediate sum and sum is the actual sum that we we are going to return so as you can see at each step we are uh, we are initializing it or we are updating it with the maximum possible value obtained till now and this is the value that we are going to return so we'll keep repeating this just uh, let's have a dry run so s becomes 1 then we add minus 3 to it so s becomes 1 minus 3 which is minus 2 so as you can see s becomes negative so we'll set s to 0 okay and update the sum as max of s comma sum so sum would be 1 because of this value then we come to 4 so s would be 0 plus 4 which is 4 and uh, this statement will not be executed and update the sum as max of 1 comma 4 so it would be 4 okay now we add minus 1 so s is still positive so we'll update the sum with 4 comma 3 and the answer would be 4 then we'll add 2 then we'll add 1 so ultimately it's going to become 4 plus 2 plus 1 which uh, sorry 3 plus 2 plus 1 which is 6 and that's why we'll return this okay so there's one special case that is when all the numbers are negative okay so why so because here it is saying saying that we need to find the contiguous subarray that is containing at least one number okay so if all the numbers are negative we cannot return zero because we need to take at least one number as the output so that's why the above problem as we are setting s to zero whenever it is uh, becoming negative so this logic only will give us zero for this uh, for uh, when all the numbers are negative but as you can see this is not required this would be an incorrect answer okay so what do we do we just sort the array in that case and if the maximum element is negative means all are negative okay so if there is an array and you sort it and you look at the maximum element of that array if it is negative then we can be sure that all the elements are negative okay so in that case we will return the maximum element among them which is the least negative value okay so this would be the solution for that case if all are negative otherwise this logic would work perfectly so let's come to the coding section where we will understand this in a better manner so let's create an vector to test our code so vector of int a let's initialize it to the uh, uh, to the this array so that we could uh, validate whether it is running fine or not so minus 2 1 minus 3 4 minus 3 4 uh, minus 1 2 1 minus 1 2 1 minus 5 and finally 4 okay so this should be minus okay so the answer for this should be 6 as per the explanation let's see what our uh, what uh, our program returns so the max sum sub array equals to uh, let's call our method find max sum and let's pass this vector to it a okay so let's see what does this now we need to write the actual logic so let's come to that okay so we'll write a method uh, which should return uh, int value or long value basically so long long find max sum as we are dealing with sum of numbers so uh, return type should be long long it would be a better practice or for this let's take only short values and we can return int only okay and uh, let's take a vector of int as input parameter okay and what do we need to return we need to return the maximum sum so let's uh, go to the steps take two variables sum to store the actual answer so sum equals to zero and another variable s equals to zero okay both initialize to zero L now let's loop over all the elements of the array so int i equals to zero i is less than n i plus plus so let's first find n 
before using it int n equals to the number of elements present in the vector which is a dot size so loop over all the elements now let's come to the actual logic part so whenever we are looping over all the elements just add them just add them to s so a of i okay uh, let's even print out the intermediate values for better explanation we can do this okay and the if condition if s is less than zero okay so if s is less than zero there is no point uh, adding that to the actual possible sum okay so that's why we'll reset it to zero this you will understand uh, when you uh, when you understand this code again on your own like after watching this video we would recommend you to just focus on this part once again and you will definitely uh, understand why we are doing so okay and finally just update the sum to be returned which is max of the current maximum which is sum itself and the intermediate value that we have obtained s okay and just return sum mm, and just return sum okay so let's see if it is running fine or not we are also printing the intermediate values okay so Okay, so it got compiled successfully. The maximum sub array sum is uh, this final value as you can see here. Okay, so let me just put a new line here. Uh, for better understanding so that we can understand what is actually happening. Okay, let's recompile as we have made changes to our code. Okay, so so as you can see, uh, let's just do new line here itself so that the actual answer prints on the new line. This is just some modifications to help you understand better. Okay, so as you can see, these are the intermediate values of S which we are printing here. So S first becomes, uh, this is the input array, S first becomes minus two. So it will get to zero, uh, reset to zero because of this condition. And then it will set to one. So here one is getting printed then again one plus minus three is minus two so that's why it's getting printed and so on so you can see the maximum value among them is getting stored in the sum variable and it is finally getting printed so as you can see the maximum possible value among this is six that's why it's getting printed now let's test this for all the negative numbers which we said that it won't work and it would return zero so if the values are minus three minus five and minus one okay so the answer should be minus one okay maximum sub sub array which should be at least one value so here the least possible uh, the maximum sum of the sub array would be minus one you can just check it out once again so as you can see our program is printing zero why so because here we are not letting it uh, become negative value okay so that's why we have written this particular condition that if all the elements are negative so what do we need to do we first need to sort uh, where do we do that? Uh, let's store that in another vector b. Vector of int b equals to a. Okay. So this is how we we initialize a vector to another vector. This particular syntax. Now let's just sort this b vector from where to where, from beginning till end. Okay. So we have sorted the vector b. Now if uh, as we are uh, initializing b with a so the both will be having the same size right so if uh, the last value which is the maximum value of b is negative so if b of n minus 1 is less than 0 this means all the values are negative because the maximum value itself is negative then just return this value b of n minus 1 okay so with this particular piece of code uh, this program getting gets completed and just let's see 
how it performs on all negative cases. So as you can see, the max sums of arrays minus one. Just have a look at this array and you will come to know that the maximum possible sum of the sub array could be minus one itself. Okay, because all the values are negative. But if we just make it one, now let's see. Okay, so finally we are getting one. Okay, so why? Because uh, this particular piece of code didn't uh, run because of this value maximum value is not less than zero and then it gets executed in the proper manner and finally the output so we would recommend you to sp spend some more time uh, understanding this logic this is the simplest way we could approach this problem and without finding all the sub arrays and the sum okay so thanks for watching